So let me let's talk about TileScript a bit. So there is one website I think that we mentioned together uh, last week without giving the proper shout out, and I think yes. that this is the website, right? The type challenges. Type challenges, yes. As far as I can remember, I tried the first exercise and wasn't able to do it. No, I mean for sure. Uh, so that, that might be this one because the Hello World, for sure, you you could do it. So <laughs> But the website is so well done because then we go to this page and you can do check your solution, share your solution, and then you can take the challenge which takes you to the playground. And for sure, I think, let me paste it here. For sure, this one you, oh, but I don't have, okay. Um, happy, I think. Um, I mean, here you need Hello World to be equal screen. So for sure, this one you would know how to to do. Okay, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, that's capable, I am. You want to, but some of the, let me go back to the, where was it? Or did I lose it? Oh, yeah, you might have to go back there. Some of the challenges are absolutely incredible, but also I'm wondering, because I was like, so some multiply is one which I, was so without looking at the website, I built with functions. I don't know why. By the way, there's something just so addictive about solving these types on the puzzle. So I spent hours trying to implement modulo, divide, all the operators for, I have no use case for it. Just for <laughs> the fun, you know, like just for the, because it's a cool puzzle. Because you have like this meta language, which is so small. You have a if, you have, a, so you can do some conditions, you can do some recursive calls, and then you can, you try to see how far you can go with this, like, small amount of primitives. Uh, it's very addictive. Yeah, I believe it. And yeah, I think it's like training for like the daily struggle of uh, making your code type safe. Um, all the techniques that you must learn by doing these puzzles will for sure help you in normal projects. I guess I would like to think so, but uh, yeah. But then I was... So and if not, it's still fun. Yes. <laughs> So I was looking like our sum and multiply, which I built. So I knew how to do Or so I thought I knew how to do it. Oh, so but this is an extreme one. Yes. And then I looked at it and I was like, so I implemented multiply. And the way it's done is by using recursive types, right? And the recursion, I think, is limited to depth 30 in TypeScript. So if I implement multiply, I can only multiply up until a certain number. But here, I'm like, oh. I see you can multiply any numbers. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? But oh, then if you go and check like out solutions. N. Wow, what is this? Yeah, I mean, oh, it's, this is wild. Okay, wow, okay, so how do you even start I think parsing this as a human? <laughs> well, not only as a human, also as a machine, because then I checked out some solution and even the, syn the syntax highlighter would break completely. So let me, let's check maybe this one. So you see, even the, so for us human, we cannot parse it, but even the syntax highlighter cannot parse it anymore. Wow, this is... <laughs> okay, I'm thinking about how do I read this, but the question really is how do you come up with this? <laughs> and um, do you, do absolute you mad lad who come up with this? Yes, but then I am I'm like, do they have the solutions for all the problems? Because sometimes I couldn't find the solution to a problem, and I'm like. Do they have it, or they just suggested it without? So uh, let's see which there were one which I thought was maybe interesting. Um, I don't know. I I saw one and I was like, oh, that's interesting. But then I couldn't find the solution, so I was like, sort. I don't know. Wow, it's sorting using types. Let's see. <laughs> Let's check out the solution. Yeah, you see, for instance, this one. So nobody was extreme enough yet. 
but then are I, you going to take on the challenge? Do you want to do one? <laughs> but, 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 but we need to start with the easy ones. Um, I mean, like, for instance, capitalize world, <laughs> see printer, parcel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is topper falter. This one I feel like we can do. Okay, you definitely need to hold my hand while while doing it though. So I think I have a So you know what I like to do in my project is called dot filter boolean on an array to remove all the null and undefined and nice uh, all non trufy values. If I do this then TypeScript doesn't get the fact that now it doesn't remove null yes. from the type. And so I have a uh, separate function in a file called trufy. And trufy is basically just like the Boolean function, but um, with type annotations um, added so that then type, if I call dot filter trufy, then it removes null and undefined from the array type. But I don't remember how this thing was implemented because I only Googled the function. Okay. So this one I feel like we can do easily based on the technique we used last week with recursive uh, types. So let's uh, let's have a look. So filter out. And so the first type we get is a tuple. Let's say of unknown, right? Okay. And then the type we need to filter. So maybe that this one is input, this one is type, which I also, I guess, is also of type. I mean, I don't need to specify unknown. And then we need the state to know when the recursion ends, right? So we use recursion to go every element of the array, right? So state extends, uh, also I would say unknown, and default value is empty array. And then we need the result, which contains the filtered value. So this one helps us to count to the length of the array. And the second one is to is just the result, all filtered values. So result extend a non and also default values. So oops. So far, so good, right? So, yeah, I think so far I can uh, <laughs> I can understand what what you're going for. So the I so we have our stop condition, right? So anything recursive, we need the stop condition. So if the length of state extends the life, the length of the input, we stop. So we return the result. And if not, we filter out. So we have input type, state we increase by one. So here actually state we can use like just number. Just gonna add a zero every time. I mean, we add any values, doesn't matter. So I add zero to state. So we increase the array by one. And here we result, we increase the array if the type at uh, i index of uh, s length, so that's where we are currently. Extends. So <laughs> let me <laughs> let me repeat Ooh, that okay. again. So if yes, please do. <laughs> so we want the current type. So for instance, let's say one. So it's from the input at index. What's what's the index? So it's zero. The index is zero, one, two, three. So it's at s dot length because s dot length increase by one every time. Oh, I see. So if so the index array is just a. Uh, for after every recursion, you add a new number to the array, and yes. that's how you like count up in TypeScript. Exactly. It's not like a variable plus plus, but you make the array longer and then call the length property. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Quite quite tacky, but perfect, quite tacky. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So these are fun fun puzzles. I'm not sure how practical they are. If it's gonna really you really use these in your everyday types, especially because of the limit on uh, recursion. So 
yeah, these are just fun puzzles to do. I'm not sure how practical they are in every to, in every decode. But again, like we discussed last week, I think it really shows. I think the path forward for TypeScript, where this topple support is gonna get uh, very good and out of the box. But so if it's extends T, we add this guy to the result, and then this. So we add it to result, and if not. We don't add anything to result, so we will just return result. And tan tan no. Ah, it's the other way around. Wait. Oh, okay. We only selected yeah, null. I'm, I'm I'm already impressed, even though you did not <laughs> quite get it right. <laughs> no, it's here. Yeah, it's the other way around. Tan tan. Right. Wow. And you can do boolean. So now you'll have boolean, but then you can filter it as well. So <laughs> that's cool. So how come it's uh inverse now? Uh because ah uh, yeah, you're right. I mean it's just the way you do the you can just do it the other way around as well. Wow. Perfect. Right? Now it's one, two, three. Wow, very nice. Okay, and I I did not think I could understand, but I mean I I still could not write it myself, but I understand it better now. It's a fun technique. How many people did get the solution on the GitHub? Mm, let's see. So quite a few people. I think it's a simple one, quote unquote. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, but this guy is next level. He used the infer keyword. So T X ten, and he's using. So he's not. Yeah, that's that's next level because he's not using any extra default generic types. Okay, but he did use any, so therefore it's fast. I'm sure it works. <laughs> if you do, let me see. Let me check check this out. So any we can replace to a non. Oops. So it does work. So t extend head. Okay, you get head and tail. That's that's fine. If head, yeah, so it does it way simpler actually than than what I did. Indeed, it seems. Uh, well, I guess I understand it less, but it's more eloquent. It's like using a fancy word that it's a uh, very descriptive, but uh, that very few people know. It's way more uh, elegant, yes. Because then basically, at some point, this becomes an empty array. So it stops. It stops the recursive call. So you don't even need to do the crazy count like I did. And uh, here, why is it between in two tuple? I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, nice. You shaved off four bytes now. Yeah. <laughs> you should submit this as the new solution. <laughs> You know, there's like these competitions where you can like um, solve a problem with as few characters as possible. Yes. This could also become a thing. But this is beautiful. And yeah, that's why it's, these things are so addictive, I think. 